All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So the LR Blue Fusions banners have been out on Global for about two to three days now. And at this point, most of you guys are probably done with most of your summons and you're either super happy right now because you got lucky and you pulled one or both, or you're super sad because you got shafted and you got nothing. I mean, either way, regardless of the result, I can definitely say that I can sympathize because I've been on both sides of that coin. Actually, mostly on the shaft side, but I get it, you know, I get it. And hopefully you guys are still enjoying the anniversary, even if you did get shafted, because, you know, keep in mind, we still got a lot of stones incoming. We still got the top grossing stones. I mean, at this one at least, which haven't come yet. And we can expect around 100 for that. So you got some more chances. All right, if you are still summoning, if you are still looking for the blue fusions. But anyways, with that said, in today's video, I wanna take a quick early look at what's coming for part two of the global five year anniversary and more specifically the banner as well as the new units that are coming with it. And uh, talk about why I personally, in my opinion, think that a lot of people, if not most people, might wanna consider skipping the banner altogether. All right, now before anybody rages or freaks out or tells me I'm dumb or wrong, try to watch the rest of the video and uh, let me explain myself, all right? Because I do feel like there is a very good case to be made for especially like free to play players to just save their stones and wait for what's coming next after the anniversary ends because it should be pretty good. And you're probably gonna wanna have a good amount of stones for the next celebration, all right? So anyways, Without further ado, let's jump into it. And as you can see on the screen right now, this is the part two banner, which is expected to drop on global in around two weeks from now, on like the 26th, 27th of this month. Could be a little bit off, but around that time, we should expect to see this double or top legendary summon banner with a brand new int LR Rose, as well as a Fizz Broly that becomes a Fizz Broly, Chilai, and Lemo. And they're both LRs. And what I will say is they're both very, very good units. All right, they're phenomenal units. Um, not exactly sure where, where I would rank them right now, but I gotta say probably, probably in the top 10 of like all the units in the game, definitely not as good, in my opinion, once again, as the Blue Fusions, but amazing nonetheless, right? And a quick look at the banner here. We're most likely gonna get the same banner on Global, so this is a good preview. We got the Broly, we got the... Uh, Rose, as well as Gawasu, uh, Paragus, Wrathful Broly, who's amazing. And uh, basically, the theme is the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, and also a couple of Zamasu's here as well. So, um, there you go. You know, pretty standard stuff, right, for a legendary summon banner. And as, as I've always said on this channel, I don't think legendary summon banners are very good value for your stones, right? As far as like getting or having a good chance of pulling good units with the stones you're spending, legendary summon banners are not great for that. Now this is a bit different because there are actually two top tier featured LRs that are new. So obviously you have double the chance of pulling a you know, new top tier unit, which is great, right? But nonetheless, there's still a ton of featured units. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 featured SSRs and you divide that into 5%, which is the featured SSR rate, right? So it's gonna be under 0.5% per unit, about 0 0.42, 0 0.4 something. I don't really do the actual calculation, but it's, it's pretty low, right? For your chances to pull one of these guys. And there are LRs, of course, in the unfeatured pool as always. But even then, I mean, you can't really expect to pull LRs like too often. I mean, it depends on your luck, obviously. It's all RNG, but um, you can easily go like a thousand stones into this banner and pull nothing useful. So, you know, it is a legendary summon banner. That's how I always feel about them. There are two featured LRs, two new LRs, so it's definitely better than your average legendary summon banner, but uh, it's still a legendary summon banner nonetheless, right? Now, moving on to the actual units themselves, let's talk about it real quick. Uh, we're gonna start with the Rose. His art is super dope and uh, his animations are awesome too. So while we're going through this video or going through his details, I'll try to find the animation for him and also the Broly 
and uh, put it somewhere on the screen so you guys can enjoy that as well. But starting with his leader skill, he gives Future Saga category Q plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 130%, or Extreme Int Types. Q plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 100%. His 12 key super is Holy Black Kamehameha, which greatly raises defense for one turn and causes colossal damage. And his 18 key is Holy Light Grenade, greatly raises defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. His passive is attack and defense plus 66% plus an additional attack plus 6% per key meter bar up to 120%. So essentially, key meter bar is just referring to the total amount of key he has and he'll get 6% attack for every key he has up to a maximum of 20 and you'll get 120% attack boost with 20 or more key. But because each boost is calculated separately, he's actually getting a maximum of 265.2% attack at 20 key. All right, so that's a huge boost right there. And he's also getting key plus two with each final blow delivered up to six. So final blow is just, you know, when he is the one that kills the enemy, he'll get key plus two for each one, or each time that happens up to six and recovers 6% HP at the end of turn in which attack was received. Okay, so he can also heal you a little bit. His passive, or sorry, his active skill is a rage mode mechanic, which can be activated when HP is 66% or less, starting from the sixth turn from the start of battle. And this 666 right here is obviously not a coincidence. And his links are Super Saiyan, Fear and Faith, Kamehameha, Dismal Future, Big Bad Bosses, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. And once he rages, you have this active skill that transforms him for one turn. And his super attack, 12 key causes destructive damage, 18 key causes destructive damage. And his passive is key plus one in addition per key sphere obtained. Attacks effective against all types. And of course he's uh, immune or uh, what's the word? He is immortal. All right, he cannot be killed or be not, not be hurt in this mode, which is like all other rage mechanics or giant form mechanics. And of course, in this form, he has some crazy stats right here. 65,000 at rainbow status, but 50,000 still in his base with like no potential. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, it says in rage mode, takes no damage and lasts only one turn. Obviously, if it's more than one turn, it would be a little bit broken. So understandable. And that's the Rosé right there. He can hit really, really, really hard. Like he does a lot of damage. Um, as far as defense goes, he can be okay defensively if you get the attack off first and then he gets hit, right? Because he greatly raises defense. So if you can super first and then he takes attacks, he'll do okay. But if he gets hit in the first slot before he's able to attack, then he might take quite a bit of damage. So got to be careful with that. But uh, overall, a very, very good unit, like I said, and definitely a unit I want to add to my collection. So there's the Rosé, and then we're going to move on to the Fizz, Broly, Chi Lai, and Lemo. Their leader skill is Movie Bosses, key plus 4, HP, attack, and defense plus 130%, or Extreme Fizz types, key plus 4, HP, attack, and defense plus 100%. Super attack, 12 key, is Surprise Attack, which greatly raises defense for one turn and causes colossal damage and lowers the enemy's attack. And then the 18 key is Survival Attack, greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes mega colossal damage. And their passive is super long, but I'll try to make it as clear as possible. Okay, so attack and defense plus 15% per key sphere obtained. So they have that nuking aspect, plus an additional attack and defense plus 5% and key plus 2 per key sphere obtained with two or more fizz key spheres obtained. All right, so if you obtain fizz key spheres, they get even more attack and defense, up to 20% attack and defense per key sphere obtained, and also additional two key for every key sphere when it's fizz key spheres, all right? And if you get them AGL or STR key spheres, they give all allies attack and defense, sorry, just attack plus 39%. If you give them tech or int key spheres, like two or more of those, then they give all allies defense plus 39%. And they also evade enemies' attacks, including super attacks, with seven or more key spheres obtained. So essentially, depending on what type of key sphere you give them, they'll do different things. They can be either more offensive or more supportive. And also, no matter what type of key sphere you give them, if you give them seven or more, they get guaranteed dodge, which is pretty insane. Super interesting unit, probably one of the most 
probably one of the most unique passives in the entire game. And uh, in practice, they are very, very good, especially when you give them the Fizz Key Spheres. They can do a ton of damage, and also getting, getting that guaranteed dodge is just crazy. I mean, as long as the event allows you to dodge, right? In certain events, you can't dodge, or like on the final stages, you can't dodge. But if you can dodge, I mean, they're essentially getting 100% damage reduction with the dodges, right? And their links are Brainiac, Solid Support, Cold Judgment, Big Bad Bosses, Shocking Speed, Fierce Battle and legendary power is there anything else i'm missing here i don't think so so that's the fizz broly chi lai and lemo they don't have a transformation or active skill or anything like that but even without that they're still extremely good so both these units like i said are fantastic units but as far as the banner goes i don't love it because it is a legendary summon banner and it's just not great value for your stones especially if you are a free to play player and the reason why we have to consider you know value for stones right now is because right after the five year anniversary ends at the beginning of august right a couple weeks after that you know like in the middle to end of august we're going to be getting another download celebration this time it's going to be the 350 million downloads because we just go by the pattern last year was 300 the year before that was 250 the year before that was 200 so most likely you know, like 99% chance we're going to get a 350 million download celebration. And at this point in time, we don't really know exactly what's coming. We don't know what the units are. I'm predicting a new Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and Omega Shenron, both of them transforming units. So obviously Gogeta would be fusing from a Super Saiyan 4 Goku and Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. And then uh, Omega Shenron would be Sin Shenron transforming into Omega Shenron, right? So that's my prediction. Now, last year, we got the uh, Gohan as well as the Cell, right? Both of them were phenomenal units. Yes, even Cell. I know some people have you know, certain opinions about how good Cell is. And there's a lot of hate that's thrown at this guy. But I think he's an awesome unit. He's not as good or as useful overall as Gohan for sure. But... Uh, still awesome and both of these guys had very solid banners for the time which we'll take a look at in a second and as far as value goes man there's no comparison right it's a new dual dokkan fest with two dokkan fest lrs versus a legendary summon banner albeit with two new non dokkan fest lrs but it's still like much better value when it comes to an actual dual dokkan fest so that's kind of the main reason why i feel like most people probably should skip the upcoming part two dual LR banner because I mean no matter what we get regardless of what characters we get what units we get for this download celebration at the end of August it's gonna be much more worthy of your stones than the Rose and Broly banner and also I'm gonna predict that the units the new LRs are probably gonna be better than Rose and Broly as well even though those two as I said are very good I mean, two new Dokkan Fest LRs right now when like units are just getting more and more broken. I gotta think they're gonna be better than, you know, Rose and Broly who were released about, you know, six months ago on JP, right? So that's just a prediction. Obviously at this point, like I said, I don't know what the units are gonna be. So it might be something completely different. Some people are saying maybe like an Ultimate Gohan and like a kid boo or something like that i don't really know right it's hard to say it could be a boo saga theme celebration because we got the cell saga last year but uh, once again regardless of what it is i'm sure the banners are going to be great i'm sure the units are going to be broken and it just makes more sense like do you really want to be summoning a ton on the part two banner for a five year and be you know screwed for the upcoming download celebration that's coming right after like literally like two weeks after so you don't really have much time in between to save up stones and that's the main problem if there was like you know a big stretch of time like you know a couple months in between the anniversary and the download celebration then it'd be fine because you can save up a couple hundred couple you know over a thousand stones maybe if you don't summon the entire time and be fine but it's the fact that we're getting this download celebration with two new Dokkan Fest LRs, as well, actually, as another non-Dokkan Fest LR, most likely, after for part two of the download celebration. So, like, three new LRs coming that soon after the anniversary, you don't, you're not going to have time to save up that many stones as a free-to-play player, right? So that's a big problem. It's a big, big problem. Now, taking a quick look at these banners, as I said, for the time, they were quite good, all right? Because I think this was, this was actually the first time that Gogeta, the blue Gogeta, 
as well as the full power Broly return to global. And I mean, they're still amazing units, but back then they were even more amazing, you know, for the time. So uh, definitely were pretty hype banners as far as I can remember. Of course, you know, not the whole banner was hype. There was the transforming Goku who was featured like a million times. Uh, he's not that hype. Uh, he's still amazing, obviously, but he was featured a couple times already. Um, I think back then this guy was not as annoying as he is now because he hadn't been featured as much and uh, there was also new units like new side units with each banner so Gohan got the uh, int 16 and Cell got the Cell Jr. right here all right and also you know STR Rose fantastic units uh, this guy with the EZA awesome so like you know pretty good banners not the best Dokkan Fest banners we've seen but like I said for the time they weren't bad and I would expect that maybe for global at least um, we're gonna get probably STR Cooler on one of these banners because it's been a while since it was released and he wasn't on the Fizz Beerus banner so it would only make sense for him to be on one of these banners and uh, also probably AGL Bardock will make his return during this time too now of course I don't know for sure so that's just random speculation but I think there's a good chance anyways I think I've definitely um, you know, said everything there's to say about this topic. Uh, if you guys really, really want Rosie and Broly, they're not gonna stop anybody. Like I said, they're amazing units and they're definitely worth having, but you gotta think about what's coming after. You gotta be smart about your stones, especially if you're free to play or even if you're pay to play. If you're not buying that many stones, then you're still gonna wanna save up a lot of free to play stones, right? To hopefully pull some fire on the upcoming download celebration, Dual Tokon Fest. Um, and also the legendary banner after that, which uh, I think in my video, my prediction video, I said maybe like a you know full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku LR or something like that. It's hard to say. Like right now, nobody knows except for Bandai Spies, which I'm not, not one of those. So <laughs> that's all I got to say, guys. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this topic. Do you guys agree with me? Do you think that most people should skip? the Rose and Broly banner, or do you think that people should summon anyways and just, you know, save up from there, or anything else in between? Let me know your opinions in the comments down below, but once again, like I said, I think most people should probably skip. I think it's the smart thing to do and try to have as many stones as possible for the download celebration at the end of August. But that's it guys, that's all from me, hope you guys enjoyed the video, hope you guys maybe learn something along the way. And as always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it, I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.